So I haven't made a video in a couple days because I've been busy. There's a lot of stuff going on in the next week, so I don't know how much I'll be able to talk to myself, but I just wanted to give myself an update. I called Hardy Nutritionals on Wednesday when our scheduled time was on Thursday because I was really feeling flat and numb and just not connected and I was wondering if I should taper down another eighth and I talked to them and they said wait it out till Friday and then call us and then we'll see what's happening then so they said don't reduce and so I didn't and the next day I felt a lot better at some point I didn't feel so disconnected and I felt more energetic and more calm I don't know it was just different so it's interesting to note that I can be feeling bad for a couple of days I was actually feeling kind of depressed and I usually don't feel depressed in all the time I've been making videos I was only depressed a couple of the days and and then it disappeared really quickly so it seems that that's what happened again it went away and so now I'm still taking the one quarter total reduction of trazodone and lithium and one quarter of a Seroquel so I didn't get a chance to call Hardy Nutritionals today to tell them I'm feeling a lot better but I will give them a call on Monday so I'm glad I'm feeling better. I don't care if it takes a really long time to taper off these medications if it happens somewhat smoothly. So I was kind of scared about that feeling depressed and disconnected. It's not a fun feeling at all. And two people I know had something that happened where they had to go to the hospital or they got taken or whatever happened and one of them I know was coming off medications very slowly and also doing not much at all being very careful not to have any stress and I know that this person ended up back in the hospital and I don't know if medications came back into the picture or what but I care about this person a lot and I feel horrible that one can be very methodical with it yet it's still very difficult to come off these medications and so I feel more inspired to keep going with this process with Hardy Nutritionals and see if it might help me to come off these medications and I'm in a low stress environment as well so this is probably the best place to do it in California even though it's not optimal because there are risks if I need to go to the hospital that would be very costly in terms of money so I'm gonna keep going with it and I feel better and more hopeful that I will make it here longer than May 15th which is going month by month at a time to me it would be better to finish the process of coming off these meds or come close to it while down here because then when I go back and I'm with my family maybe I'll never have to go back to the psychiatrist maybe Whereas if I went back now, I might be like, well, maybe I should go talk to the psychiatrist and get stuck in that whole paradigm again. And a hummingbird paid me a very nice compliment yesterday or the day before. Get off my head. It was after the day I made that fly video. I think that fly helped to heal me somewhat. It was this gesture of the universe reminding consciousness of that connection of the interconnection of everything 
And the next day I was walking by this little flower bush and a hummingbird just came right in front of me and was feeding on all the little flowers like I wasn't even there. I was like one foot away from this hummingbird and it was by my shins and it has a back completely to me and, and it was going around the little flower bush and I feel like the more we come into contact with life and nature, the more it trusts us. So I had that thing with the fly where it drank out of my eye. And from a fly's perspective, that's pretty brave. If flies had a game to see who was the bravest fly, that one would win. And if they sat around with all their little fly buddies and said, I wonder which one of us can drink out of a human being's eye. But then they would need a willing human being that would just sit there and be curious about what the heck was happening and not kill it or swat it away. And that fly followed me two-thirds the way back to my room. It was very interesting. Most people wouldn't have the patience to really be with that long enough to ever discover that one could befriend a fly for an hour and have it hang around in a way that was showing this thing's intelligence or curiosity or playfulness or something. So I do feel back in connection with nature. I did finally get some bug spray because the bugs here are pretty relentless. Like this is so beautiful. This is what heals. I made some notes today because I was listening to some talks. So I don't know if it's anything worth talking about. I feel very disconnected to what I was saying before. I really don't remember at all. It's like it was erased, but it wasn't because I made videos. They were talking about the sense of self and how thought and experience, etc. <laughs> generate the sense of self. And I was wondering, what does perception generate? Or what does map consciousness generate? It doesn't just generate this sense of me. It generates this sense of responsibility and action and having to act now. This immediacy. And there's energy from acting immediately. There's energy involved and derived from not delaying something. Not putting it into memory to think about later. So I was thinking that if perception is mediated by thought, if thought comes in and injects things into perception, it's not a direct perception, then that mechanism creates the self that's thinking the thoughts. So thought interfering with perception generates the self, which is inaction. It's not acting based on the actual perceptions, but on thought mediated perceptions which again creates the self and if thought comes in and mediates and interferes and creates the self then there's no real contact with perception with actuality so the self in a way is non-contact and that relates to what I was talking about before about how it pulls us off our center of gravity if we have these sounds playing in our mind all the time, it creates this center of sound gravity, the center of sound that pulls us off our center of gravity and creates the self in that gap from where we would be if we weren't being pulled by these sounds away from the actual perceptions. So the self in a way is non-contact with reality. And maybe that's somewhat helpful to not have contact with all of it if there's some of it that is reliable, 
probably repeatable and then that way we can actually allow some of our resources to be diverted to perceiving something else. But to me, those diversions have actually been moved towards hijacking. We're addicted to certain elements in reality and then... So map consciousness, it puts us in contact with different images and sounds. And that could move us into contact with different parts of reality than we're used to. It's not necessarily pathological, it's just not part that we're used to and all of a sudden those parts are made salient by these other images and sounds. And I think part of that is trying to purge those images and sounds and show us, look what images and sounds are doing. We think we have these coherent ones, but look what they're doing in general. And the self tries to create pleasure from its symbols. So the holograms are tied to the emotion of pleasure. And so much of life is trying to feed the self, so feed that image complex that wants pleasure. And the machinery of pleasure isolates because it's trying to use things to get pleasure. It sees things as a means to its own end. And when we make the meaning of life pleasure, when it's not, any action on this is actually disorder. And part of map consciousness could be decoupling us from this pleasure system. And it's quite painful. It's like withdrawing from a drug. When somebody withdraws from alcohol, intoxication, they can hallucinate, they can be delusional. It's the same sort of thing. It's like we're intoxicated by the self. And when we're withdrawing from it, we can have hallucinations, we can be confused. It's totally disorientating. I just made that part up now and it's pretty good. So when we try to improve ourself, we're just trying to improve this hologram, which is information that we store up inside about ourselves. And when we think we've improved the hologram, we get pleasure. When we think we have weakened it for some reason, we get pain. And so it's a movement of pleasure and pain and reward and punishment. We feed the self hologram and relating with this image generates a voice action or behavior. It's not really an action, but it's a voice based on the past. And when we go into map consciousness, we're getting into contact with a different voice. It's a different self or it's a transitory self or it's showing us about the self and what happens when it dissolves. So if there's ever some kind of mass dissolving of selves, the people who have already experienced those things will have an idea of what's going on. So when thought moves as sound, the hologram also arises. So it creates the hologram self. And we use this information for action. But the very fact that we're meeting life with preformed sound and light shows that we're not actually meeting actual life because just as if we're listening to music it's harder to have a conversation with somebody the brain only has so much capacity and so when we're not doing that it has capacity to do other things and that could be one of the reasons why we have other capacities arising in map consciousness and I'm not saying it's not there's no images and sounds, there's sometimes there's a lot more. And it could be part of how it's purging some of it and getting us in contact with something else. So the self could be an emergent property of thought. And the self could be choice every time we think we choose something, it's the self because it's based on past information. And so right now the brain is being used for memory storage and retrieval. 
to use later in what it sees as similar situations. And perception is always new, so it can't be looking for similarities from the past if it is to see anew. And I wonder what kind of different life gets created through perception and action versus thought and past associations. What's the actual divergence in trajectories?